Um, hello, I am Dagmar Monet. Um, Dagmar, a German name, but I come originally from Cuba. I live in Germany since 17 years, so, uh, 17 years since, yeah. And now, so now I am professor of computer science at the Berlin School of Economics and Law. I teach uh, computer science students, so we are not in the name of the university, if it is this a university of applied sciences, but uh, we have a faculty where we have engineers, etc., and also computer science. So I teach computer science students, in especially um, artificial intelligence and software engineering. And I teach in the third, fifth, and fourth semester too. The groups are not too big, so 35 to 40 students, which is good for the exercises, etc., to have small teams working on projects. And I am there since uh, 2010, so more than five years now, uh, and as a professor, so teaching computer science. So how have things changed in terms of the computing um, since when you first started, that first computer that you saw and used in the classroom, and now? Um, I haven't uh, thought of that before, no. but there are a lot of differences. So that time, we, or at least in Cuba, when I was a student, we had professors that, um, with lectures, where they wrote everything on the board. We had only computer uh, lab hours twice a week and uh, nobody had a laptop or a computer, personal computer uh, at home. So we had to come to the university to do our projects. Um, and this is not the case now. So in my uh, lectures, all students have a lab. A laptop, a laptop, also a computer at home. And it is uh, different how students um, participate in class. That time, professors wrote at the board, um, made, uh, asked questions, etc. And it was different communication, professor, student. Now, I can't write also on the board, but they are more interaction because the students can search live. On internet, in internet, what I am talking about. So this information is not only from the professor, but also live. They can search for new information, or they can also play games now in class. But it is different. So how do the students participate in class? It's very different. They have, they can also do the projects at home, uh, remotely. Uh, without to, the, the need to come to the university, and this is very different. So this is one main difference. Students are more independent; and they can deal with computers in their lives, uh, like I didn't uh, had to change at that, that time. Mm -hmm. I teach uh, so two main modules. There are more modules, but the the, the areas are two 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 very different ones. Software engineering, so how to engineer software, how to, to, to build programs, which are di different phases uh, when building a program, from analysis of requirements, what is to be done, until uh, what was already programmed and should be installed on the computers. Going from analysis through testing programs, uh, coding the programs that were tested, etc., etc. And this is one, one area. The other area is artificial intelligence, so um, how to build intelligent programs that model human behavior or that uh, can uh, deal with intelligent tasks, intelligent because they are assumed to, to behave like humans do, for example, this is one of the approaches. And this is the other topic, so intelligent, artificial intelligence and different um, areas inside artificial intelligence, machine learning algorithms or agents and multi-agent systems 
or case basis reasoning or genetic algorithms. So there are a lot of different uh, algorithms uh, that can be classified as machine learning algorithms and um, interactions between programs, uh, agents, uh, intelligent agents, multi-agent systems. So every to any topic of artificial intelligence. But this is our, these are my basic, one, basic ones I teach since since 2003, not at this university, but uh, things, uh, since 2003, in Germany at least. Okay. We have dual students. It means they work at enterprises. They come to us because they are, are enterprises. So when they finish school, they can apply for this kind of um, studies. So enterprises visit schools and then a come to those students which are maybe the ones they want to, to have in their enterprises in the future and they immatriculate in our school. So we have a time where the students are at the university and a time where the students are working from the first semester on. Sometimes they are 17 years old, 18 years old, uh, but they work in projects, on projects at the enterprises. So when they finish, they go mainly to the enterprises and there are a lot of different jobs they can do from project managers to programmers to working in other kind of computer science related uh, jobs. Very few, not very few in the last years, it, there is a tendency um, more or less half of the students want to study master degrees or continue in academia somehow. Uh, so they don't need to, to, to remain at the enterprises. And there are also a few percent which want to do something else, to, to, to go to another enterprises. But the, the, they know which enterprise they are since the beginning, and they remain at the enterprises. This is something like, like a, <coughs> a contract or something like that. Uh, which is some security. So when they finish after three years, they, they know they can remain there if they are good enough, yeah, mm. of course. Is there a, a sort of equal split in men and women in your courses? Um, this is a big problem. It was not a problem when I was a student, so we were 50-50 more or less. <clears throat> but in, in Germany and, and in other countries, this is really a problem, uh, problem <coughs> women, women in in computer science and I have sometimes courses where I don't have one solely one in the class. Um, sometimes two, three from 36. Uh, and I am actually the um, only professor woman in my faculty computer science and the other engineers. There is a second one which is a mathematician and she and I are the only two ones in the whole faculty, so this is a big problem. Also. So what changed? You said it, it wasn't like that, but now it is. What, what changed? Why did it change? Uh, it was not like that in Cuba, but I don't know, maybe the culture or it is a job which is more, it is a technical job and maybe in countries, in other countries, is seen another way. But it was, it was not the past, I think. The pa in the past, it was more or less uh, a balance. But it has changed, and um, I think it has to do with the culture of acceptance of women, how they behave also in class. So sometimes, when I go to schools with some computer science project for children, um, the boys behave differently. They want to touch, they want to, to play with the computers, they, want, they, they um, express this differently. So the girls are more quiet and don't, don't, sometimes don't, don't, don't want to answer. They think, no, maybe this is not uh, right. Uh, the boys are exposed to, to to computers, to, to games, uh, earlier than girls. And I think this is from, from home on. So it is not a problem at the universities. It is a problem uh, 
since uh, it, they are very, very small uh, children, or and the, 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 this is reflected then in the university. Very, very few women want to study further, and um, it is not a surprise that the girls, that the women have also better grades. It is in my classes also. So I, I, I always think they will be a great computer scientist. However, I, they are only two or three, so it should start from school and from, from home. This uh, view, this uh, encounter with computer, with, with computer. It is too late at the university to do something. It should be done. Uh, in school is also too late, so from home. Yeah. So do you think that's something that will change, or do you think it will end up staying that way? Uh, there are a lot of different programs to, to change this. And one of them is children universities. So from some partnerships, some programs together with schools, I personally try to, to have from time to time projects for my students developing programs for schools. So I have uh, some contacts with schools, they have needs, and then I, I put my students, I gave them topics to do some programs that the schools need. And then we do or we celebrate some children university where the kids come to the university and I try always to have both girls and boys. Mm -hmm. um, but there are also other initiatives in, 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 in Germany in, in general to, to, to try to to, to start from school, to change also the problem. I have uh, read in the news that also in UK, for example, computer science or uh, a, a topic, a mandatory topic in school, and this is great. We don't have this in Germany and, right. uh, yet, but I think it is the, the way. It is uh, change, uh, times change, so now maybe there are other topics or other courses which are no more, uh, in, they are important. But for the future, the future is my, uh, computer science oriented or technique with other uh, STEM um, specialities that will drive the future. So we have to adapt now in order to, to, to cope with the future. And these are the kids we have to, 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 to teach. One way is computer science at school. This is great. So not only projects from time to time with, school, with, uh, with schools, but also making computer science some, some um, course from the beginning, like in US uh, now, uh, which is also from the government money and projects to start, because then it is too late. Mm -hmm. The topic e-learning, so now students are not um, anymore only in class, these presents uh, lectures, they also learn from home or from any other places. So um, teaching should adapt to this normal behavior, common behavior, which is life now, where students has, have smartphone, phones, laptops, etc., etc. So there are a lot of um, ways to provide students with information where they can also learn, read materials for classes, etc., etc., um, not only in class but also from home. So, how do they interact with uh, technology is a very important issue, but also how do they use programs or information or they prepare for class is also very important. So, um, I, I try to, to, to analyze first how do students interact with technology. I have some um, small project with a professor from the University of Hefforshire. We have done a survey. She has a lot of um, experience in, in this area. And we did the same survey in our university. First, to know how the students interact with technology, because knowing that, it is a very powerful tool for lecturers, for professors, for um, the people who teach those students, because they can adapt their lessons, they can adapt their lectures, depending on what students have. This is one area. 
The other area is um, which kind of information do students prefer most? For example, they, a very, very common uh, use of these e-learning systems is to put lectures, slides on the internet so that they can download this from home. But there are also videos, there are also other kind of courses. We have seen this in the massive online open courses where they can also learn at their paces. So they can rewind, they can go back, they have exercises, they can maybe learn two, three, four lessons in a week without to go to the university. So it doesn't mean that this is more important than this presents face-to-face -face discussions, but a combination of both is what I think is it's the, the best combination. So I, I research or I try to investigate this technology use, but at the same time, which are the more um, comfortable or um, ways students can deal with this technology for learning. So at the end point, the most important persons in the classroom are the students and how they learn, which technology they have, but also which information they can use, videos or also produce uh, information, construct uh, le uh, learning is also very important. So I have some projects with students uh, from my classes where we do small things or we try to investigate this uh, deeper. There is a great explosion of these massive online open courses. So for example, I, I also, I always recommend in my class artificial intelligence, there are a lot of courses from the Stanford University, from other universities. So I point them to, to these courses and then we discuss in class some issues related to that or um, try to, to, to learn new ones and try to discuss this up-to-date information with also other areas. Um, and I think this is more, more um, living, no, more, how do you say this in English, in more, they have more joy when they discuss these yeah. topics and also constructive programs according to the up-to-date information, but also face-to-face -face discussions. So a combination, I think it is the, the, the right one. When I looked into your background, um, some things relating to big data, have uh, you talked about that at all? What, what have you worked on? Or? Uh, it was a project. It was a project with uh, some um, human resources specialists. They wanted to, to learn from different enterprises in Germany, middle enterprises, but also big ones and small enterprises. They made a survey, how do they deal with data from their co-workers or from their workers? And the analysis and why do they use big data, not only for making decisions at the enterprise, but also to deal with human resources. What do they know? Which persons may be, uh, need some um, uh, courses or if I need a new co-worker, which are the characteristics, etc. And the findings were they are not exploiting the benefits of big data the way they could. So it was some, um, some um, research project trying to investigate those human resources use of this big data information and it was the case where I was involved with, with uh, big data but on the other side big data is a lot of data so it is a synonym a lot of data which is available in the internet with the use of uh, social networks etc etc and I use also this approach to try to study to study sentiment analysis or try to figure out which are the topics the people talk about, for example, in Twitter or, or in blogs, etc., to try to analyze natural language, to try to put this information or to model or to, to build um, algorithms that try or that understand what people are saying and try to, to, to do something with this data. So it is a very important topic uh, nowadays. And it will be also very, very important because every minute there are a lot of information which is produced and um, hopefully there are now a lot of algorithms and a lot of techniques 
that uh, are profiting from the technical advances too. So this is very, very um, useful for, for the future to try to make intelligent computers more intelligent. My greatest achievement. Um, I think being a professor, a woman, not from Germany but from Cuba, from a, develop, a developing uh, country, um, teaching computer science, <coughs> which is not uh, useful. So every time when somebody asks me, what, what do you do? Uh, and I say, I am professor of computer science, they say, oh, they don't, it, it doesn't match. So I think I, it, I have, a, I do now what I wanted to do all my life. So to, to have to do something with computers and to teach others, to give away my experiences, my, my knowledge. And I think this is the, the biggest thing I have achieved professionally. Um, and I'm very proud of that because every time it, it is, life is not always with positive uh, signs, uh, but uh, when there is some negative one, I always try to, to remind me, but look where you are now. Yeah? And Germany is also a very, very a great uh, country where, where technology also um, plays an important role. So I know where I am. Um, it is also an opportunity to know and to learn more. So there is no top. So I can continue. And I think what I have achieved now, until now, it is on the way to, 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 to be grateful for everything what have uh, what has happened to me. So I, I'm open for new things, but I think computer science was, was for me. Yeah. And I am proud of that, that I followed that path. Yeah. I think all was because of one uh, mathematics teacher I had in school. And um, it was that time, I was 12, I think, and that uh, teacher, an old man, um, how to, to, to analyze a problem, uh, to solve some problem. It was for me the way he explained that to us and his personality, what was for me determined so for, for uh, liking mathematics. Mathematic plays an important role in computer science, of course. But I think this was the first uh, thing that motivated me to, to, to go in this STEM direction. With computer science, that course I had when I was 16, 17, it was also a moment where, where I told me, oh, this, this is something I want to do. And the rest um, was a lot of hard uh, work, but also a lot of people during my career, different teachers I had, where one thing, I want to, to be like this person, or I want to, to do something also in this direction, and mentors in this way, uh, after I changed my country, so I came to Germany, um, also my supervisor there, so pushing me up. And this is something I, that are moments, so not big ones like that one, uh, that time, but a lot of small moments that, that are part of what I am today, yeah. A museum like this, have you been anywhere like this before? Or? Is it something that you think is a good idea? Or? No. So until now, you find, so there is some part in the museum of, uh, technical museum in Berlin, there is a technical museum and they have some, also some old computers there, etc. Et but only dedicated to computers. This is the first time I am one. There should be maybe other ones in the world. 
but um, it is the first one. I think it is a, a, a great opportunity for uh, children, for young people who haven't, haven't had this uh, um, um, contact with these old computers that they only see uh, in pictures to come to, to see how it was. I, I think also having people from, from old times, old times, so computer science is, is very, very young compared to other sciences, but having people from, all, from these old times explaining or um, trying to, 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 to give out their experiences, how they, it was that time, it, it is very, very interesting, not only for, for young people, but also for, for the old ones, to, to remember, etc. I, I think it is a very, very good idea, Museum of Computer Science. It, it was actually my, my uh, the kick. So I came to Cambridge only one day, and when I saw, what can I do in Cambridge? Okay, to, to visit places, etc. This I will do this in the afternoon. But when I saw this event, Museum of Computer Science that, or of Computers, then I thought I have to go there, <laughs> I have to see museum, I, maybe I find the things I, I, I use it to work with and I don't have them anymore, so maybe it is interesting. I, and it was my first uh, thought on that. So about computers in general, this is, this is the, the future. And sometimes I see um, parents that try to, to to avoid that the sh their children play with computers or with mat phones, etc., etc. Too much using technology, it is not good, I, I agree. But they need that because it's, it is the future. So um, when they start earlier, it's not early enough. This is why I leave my kids to, 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 to deal with computers, to use computers for playing. You show me, you have a section where games, uh, play, uh, dedicated to games, uh, games history, etc. This is very important because this, not only users, but try, trying to imagine how this is built, uh, is also the first encounters with maybe possible people in the future that programs something like that, that try to analyze how, how do I get this to, to do that, etc., uh, etc. Et and I think it is very important. So starting with young children, with young people, uh, with some kind of activity, either games or museum visits or doing something, it is um, some guarantee for the future. So I don't see this as a real problem, avoiding kids uh, having technology in their hands, but um, they should. And we should try to cope with this, what is best, but not trying to put away technology. Uh, there is a lot to do, it is a new, in, in, the, in the last, Ten years, maybe they were more social networks, uh, interaction, and, and internet, etc. So there should be also ethics about that. that are very important, and they should be okay guided. But the solution is not putting away technology from the people who will develop technology in the future. So maybe this is something that. I try to communicate, to, to, to try to, 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 to tell also the teachers we, we work with. Because sometimes you have this at school, no, we don't have to use computers, we, on, we all only need this and this and this. And I think it is a mixture of both. So we need interaction, that people interact, that people um, discuss with other persons and not with a machine. But we need also machines, and we will need machines in the future. So some combination, I think it is important. Yeah. Um, 
I want to thank you for this invitation. <laughs> I, I thought I, I will visit the museum, I will see what is there to remember my, my past years in computer science and to, to have some time uh, um, um, dealing with the technology I dealt uh, before. But when I became the invitation to, to say something about me, about computer science, I thought Oh, that is great, because I will not be the only one. There will be also other people trying to, 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 to tell their stories. And I would like to, to, to see in the future how, how is the product at the end. And it will be very interesting to, to know what other, people's, what other people think and have done, etc., etc. So I, I think this is a great initiative. Yeah, thank you very much.